Hello, welcome to our second carboxylic acid video. In this video, I'll be preparing carboxylic acids, whereas in the next and last video on um, carboxylic acids, I'll be talking about their reactions. Now, for preparation of carboxylic acids, we have a number of methods. The first one I'd like to talk about is called the carbonation of Grignard reagents. Grignard reagents, according to what we saw in the carbonyl chemistry as well as alcohol chemistry, are compounds of formula RNGX. Now, when they are reacted with CO2 carbon 4 oxide, we would normally get intermediates that could be represented as RCOO and MGX. And when this intermediate is hydrolyzed, so I'm going to write H plus H2O, we will get RCOOH. Alright, so this is a simple reaction. From RMGX, we add CO2 first to get RCOO, that's the skeleton that will eventually become RCOOH. So under exam conditions, if I'm given something like C285MGBR as my Grignard reagent and I'm asked what carboxylic acid would I get by carbonating this Grignard reagent then I'll need to write as initial product C285COOMGBR then when this is hydrolyzed I'll get C285COOH so that's propanoic acid now it is interesting to note that by the end of this reaction, the final product will be one carbon longer than the initial Grignard reagent. Like in this case, my Grignard reagent had two carbons, but the acid I have produced there has how many carbons? Three. So this is carbonation of Grignard reagents. It is one way of preparing alkanoic acids. The second way of making alkanoic acids that I'm going to show us now is oxidation. So alkanoic acids can be made by oxidation, but the question is, oxidation of what? What can we oxidize to get alkanoic acids? Just in case you've not watched our previous videos, in the alcohol series, I talked about the fact that primary alcohols can be oxidized to give alkanals first and finally alkanoic acids so now that we're preparing alkanoic acids we could carry out oxidation of primary alcohols we could carry out oxidation of alkanals we could carry out vigorous oxidation of secondary alcohols because that will give us ketones first and the ketones will further be oxidized or broken down into two moles of alkanoic acid. So in any case, you can get alkanoic acid by oxidation of alcohols or carbonyl compounds. So imagine something like ethanol as a very simple case. This is ethanol. If ethanol were oxidized by KMnO4, then we would get CH3COOH as final product, and that's ethanoic acid. But remember that in between, there's an intermediate called ethanol. But what if we take this one? Look at this. This compound is CH3COOH -H and CH3. And we were to oxidize it. If you oxidize this, normally you get an alkanone. The alkanone is written as CH3, C, double bond O, then CH3. So this is propan 2 all, and that is propanone. Now, on powerful oxidation or vigorous oxidation of propanone, it is possible for the substance to split like this. And when it splits like that, this left-hand side with one carbon will be oxidized to alkanoic acid, HCOH, and then the second side with two carbons will also be oxidized to alkanoic acid, CH3COOH. So for um, ketones or alkanones, they are usually not acted upon by mild oxidizing agents. But with powerful or strong oxidizing agents like HNO3, like H2SO5, 
then you can have oxidation with rupture of carbon to carbon bonds so that you get fragments like we have obtained here. So this is oxidation producing alkanoic acids. But we also have another group of compounds that we can oxidize. So this is A now, oxidation of alcohols, alkanals, alkanones. But on B, we are looking at oxidation of alkyl benzenes. Alkyl benzenes. What are the alkyl benzenes? Alkyl benzenes are compounds where you have your benzene ring and then there's an alkyl group attached such as CH3, C2H5, C3H7, C4H9 or even a secondary alkyl benzene. A secondary alkyl benzene can be something like this C, CH3, CH2, CH3 and then H. This is a secondary alkyl benzene. It is different from a primary alkyl benzene in that in a secondary alkyl benzene, there is only one hydrogen on this carbon. This carbon that is attached to the benzene ring has only one hydrogen. That's a secondary alkyl benzene. Then a the tertiary alkyl benzene does not have any hydrogen here. Instead, it will still have another alkyl group here. So primary alkyl benzene, imagine that this CH3 were H. Then you have HH, that's primary. Only one H, that's secondary. No H's at all, that would be tertiary. That would be a tertiary alkyl benzene. Now this reaction I'm discussing here does not work for tertiary alkyl benzenes. Tertiary alkyl benzenes cannot be oxidized to give alkanoic acids. That means if I remove this and put CH3 and I ask you, what will you get when KMnO4 oxidizes this compound? Your simple answer to me should be KMnO4 will not oxidize this compound. But what if I remove this CH3 and replace it with H? Now I have a secondary alkyl benzene. As long as this carbon has H, even if it's only one H or two or three, just let it have H then KMnO4 can act on it and the product remains the same as this case. You know, in this case now, the carbon has HHH. So as long as there's H available on this carbon, the moment KMnO4 acts on it, your product will be benzoic acid, which we draw like this. So this will be COOH. So your product is benzoic acid irrespective of whether this is CH3, C2H5, C3H7 or even a secondary alkyl group like that, everything is chopped down. No matter how this becomes, no matter how long it is, it is all chopped down to one carbon so that our product is benzoic acid. So oxidation of alkyl benzenes by KMnO4 will give us a particular alkanoic acid and that is benzoic acid. We are not done preparing alkanoic acids. I would like to show you how they are prepared by hydrolysis. So there are hydrolytic methods of making alkanoic acids. But just in case you would need this, you could pause the video for now. So that after now, I'll wipe the board and continue with hydrolytic reactions. Alright, let's move on. Let's talk about hydrolysis. Hydrolytic reactions that can give rise to carboxylic acids. So the big question here would be, what can we hydrolyze to get alkanoic acids? Well, there are different things we can hydrolyze to get alkanoic acids. So hydrolysis, the first thing we can hydrolyze to get alkanoic acid will be nitriles. What are nitriles? Nitriles are cyanides. They are compounds of formula RCN. So when RCN undergoes hydrolysis, it becomes RCOOH. So look at this case. Example now. Let's say we have C2H5, C triple bond N, and this is undergoing hydrolysis. 
then our product will be C2H5COOH. In that the hydrolysis taking place just involves the conversion of CN to COOH. So the CN becomes a COOH, and that's an alkaloic acid product we have so obtained. See another example here. Another example is this CN. In this case, when I have my hydrolysis occurring, then the product becomes benzoic acid, which I'll draw as COOH. So in all, when nitriles or cyanides are hydrolyzed, all that happens is that C triple bond N simply becomes COOH, and that's all. So this is another way of making alkaloic acids, hydrolysis of nitriles. Now, apart from nitriles, we may also hydrolyze carboxylic acid derivatives. What are the derivatives of carboxylic acids? We have the esters, we have the acid chlorides, we have acid anhydrides. Once these compounds react with water in the presence of mineral acid, we are sure to get alkaloic acids. Let me show you one example. In the case of esters, for example, let's say we have this ester CH3, COO, CH3 plus H2O in the presence of mineral acid, you are going to get as product for this reaction CH3, COOH plus CH3OH. So you see now that I have an alkanoic acid produced from this reaction. So alkanoic acids are obtained not just when esters are hydrolyzed, but when acid derivatives generally are hydrolyzed, even the salts of alkanoic acids, even the salts of alkanoic acids or carboxylic acid salts, when they are hydrolyzed, they can also produce um, carboxylic acid. So we say acid hydrolysis of carboxylic acid salts will give us acids. Look at this case, CH3, COONA. This is a carboxylic acid salt. If it to, to be added upon or if it to be acted upon, please, by let's say HCl aqueous. So that's acid hydrolysis now. If this guy acts on that, we will get CH3 COOH plus NaCl. So again, we have a carboxylic acid salt being hydrolyzed by acid to give us alkanoic acid. These are less popular methods of making alkanoic acids. That is um, hydrolysis of carboxylic acid derivatives and hydrolysis of carboxylic acid salts. They are not very popular methods, but we can see very clearly from the equations that they also give us alkanoic acids. That's all we'll look at for preparation of carboxylic acids. But for their reactions, we would have a full video because they have many very interesting reactions, including the hell volat zelinsky reaction. We'll talk about that one and how it produces alpha halogen acids. Then we'll see some other reactions like the decarboxylation to give um, cyclic ketones. All of those will be in the next video. That's carboxylic acids 3. So you do well to um, announce the coming of that video by sharing this particular one. Then remember to subscribe if you have not done so. Turn on the notification bell and then like. We want your likes, we want your comments. We want this channel to go as far as possible. So don't stop sharing, just keep sharing. Let your friends hear about it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.